Hello and welcome everyone back to the Tiberium Armory series. It's been a couple of weeks. First it was Christmas and then it was all the crazy stuff happening in America. But now it's back. We're back with the Tiberium Armory series. And today we are looking at the Brotherhood of Nod Banshee Fighter Bomber and generally plasma weapons. Now the Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of Nod Banshee Fighter Bomber was developed sometime after the First Tiberium War using information gathered from the Tacitus. The Banshee was, was a completely unique aircraft from the human factions. In fact, it far more resembles the Storm Rider from the Scrin than it does any other human vehicle. The Banshee uses no visible engines of any known type, but appears to be capable of flight, VTOL movements, and dogfighting with other aircraft at air superiority speeds. It is not entirely clear that even Nod understands how it functions, as its successor, the Vertigo Bomber, appears to use turbine engines of a more conventional type. Perhaps this adopting of a more conventional technology was the result of the Brotherhood losing access to much of its technical ability after the Second Tiberium War, but one can never be sure. It is never stated directly what the top speeds of the Banshees are, but one can speculate based on the designation as a fighter bomber. The designation of fighter bomber is somewhat still relevant today, but largely craft that would be known as fighter bombers are now known as multi-role aircraft. One of the best multi-role aircraft flying in real life as of January of 2021 is the F-18 Hornet, the Super Hornet. Which, is the, which joined the United States Air Force for full fleet service in 1999. If we assume that they are comparable, that would mean that the Banshee is capable of moving at over 1100 miles per hour, or Mach 1.1, with a climb rate of 44,882 feet a minute. The Banshee does not operate with any stealth features like that of the Vertigo, where it can turn invisible, so it may be assumed that the primary feature of the craft is its small, fairly small size. Assuming that the craft is operated by one person based on the sound files, if the cockpit glass is 6 feet wide, then the craft is around 26 feet wide and about that same distance long. The bottom is sloped and contoured to prevent e easy radar detection. With a high enough veterancy, the pilot can learn to fly without the threat of radar detection at all, presumably through some flight upgrade. At the same time, it is, as it is capable of filling a fighter role, it is also capable of filling a bomber role, as it is able to prey on mechanized vehicles and tanks alike, with some ace pilots having the honor of taking down some of the biggest targets on the battlefield, GDI's Mammoth uh, to Super Heavy Walker, as in this sequence right here. Note that the speed of the, the craft is flying at. This is an incredibly low speed for a plane capable of what it is capable of. In fact, the whole thing reminds me of the Vought V173 Flying Pancake from World War II. Now there was a plane. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Banshee is a very unconventional aircraft, and as it is a Brotherhood aircraft, it also uses extremely exotic weapon systems. It uses two high-power plasma cannons, each capable of tearing through armor with kinetic force and sheer temperature. Each of these blasts are also capable of imparting electromagnetic pulses that are generated by the plasma reactions, as is, probably, what we saw in that earlier sequence. It can, make it, uh, it can attack in three runs before needing to return to its cradle and be reloaded. But wait, plasma cannons? What is this, Warhammer 40k? Does plasma actually work like that? Well, yes and no. In my research for this video, I have found out some very interesting things about how such weapons actually function in the real world. Generally, they work in two different ways, depending on where you generate the plasma and how. 
The first way is that short high energy pulses of light using lasers are fired which, which generates a plasma explosion at the target up to a kilometer away and using the surrounding air and matter as the propellant. This type of plasma weapon is very useful against soft targets but not as much against heavier ones such as vehicles with multiple feet of armor plating. Instead they use the second method in which a gas such as a liquid or gaseous hydrogen is compressed and superheated contained within an electromagnetic field and then released at a target. This method delivers a much higher punch but also has a much shorter range giving the Banshee the power to pull off hunting out with MK2. The Banshee is never shown with any other weapons so it is assumed that they do not carry any others. Although if it did carry missiles it would make it a much more effective dogfighter. At the end here I'd like to make a quick comparison. The Banshee is roughly 26 feet wide and long. This compares with the F-18E Super Hornet, which measures 44 feet wide at its widest and 60 feet long, making the Banshee smaller. Although another fair measurement of the Banshee puts it at 32 feet wide and long with the cockpit being 8 feet wide, whether for an increased view or a co-pilot, making it larger in overall mass. Also, it is important to mention that on the battlefield of this particular future, there existed other craft like the YF-22, which is the precursor to the real-life F-22, that was stolen in large numbers by, uh, by Nod in prior to the First Tiberian War. And now, other vehicles like um, the F-18 Hornet, the F-22 Fighter, possibly even the F-35, those existed in that time period and would have been these sorts of um, vehicles that the Banshee would have had dogfights with. And lastly, it is not known if the YF-22 was actually ever phased out of service for the Banshee, as no other unit of an air superiority type really is seen by the Nod faction going forward. It is my opinion, therefore, that the YF-22s and um, those other sorts of air superiority weapons that exist in real life today would probably continue to exist up until and through the Third Tiberian War, given that we don't really see anything else come out from the game series, and a lot of these things like the YF-22 are... Uh, state-of-the-art even today in 2021 and they would probably be just as effective for them uh, for the GDI and for Nod in uh, their more modern periods as it is for us right now and uh, that's it we're done um, I hope everyone has enjoyed this uh, we're gonna come back next week with a different topic and um, I hope everyone has a wonderful day or well that's what I'd like to say uh, as you've seen over the last several videos the quality of the videos has been going up steadily um, I've added things like in this video an actual uh, in-game cinematic showing what the Banshee is capable of and I've added things like music and a intro cinematic of a sort. Um, I'd like to start making these videos be longer somehow. If um, someone can point out how I might be able to do that, stretch out the information a little bit or add um, potentially add some gameplay um, from the games to this to supplement it um, please tell me in the comment section below and I will get back to you um, this is Game Master Karakin signing off once again see ya